All right, everybody. I'm joined today with my best friend, Wambong. And uh, there's, it's really hard to even introduce Wambon because uh, we have so much history. Uh, we've definitely surpassed friendship. I uh, definitely think of you as my brother at this point in time. You have to be one of the most straightforward and raw human beings <laughs> that I know. Um, so, you know, I, I know in the past I have kind of just talked about um, like our favorite moments together, what our friendship has meant to, to us, that type of thing. And um, it's just really funny to even try and put uh, some form of a, a context to a conversation about friendship with you because it's so natural at this point in time. I, I remember when we were kids, I didn't even think you liked me. And then you were like, hey man, like you need to ride to school? I'll, I'll hook you up. Like, let's, let's go do this. So let's, let's have some fun. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then, and then you always... <laughs> I don't know if that was a good thing though. <laughs> like, I don't know. You may have not wanted to accept that friendship. You would have done way better in school. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, we both did all right. So, you know. You know. All things considering, there was I mean, far less sober days <laughs> than, right. than, than not sober days. And it's pretty lucky that we only had a five-minute drive to high school. That's for sure, you know. But uh, – and yeah. then – and then I just have to say that uh, you have this amazing, calm demeanor and you're, you're always in control, but you must be the most radical human being that I know, you know, like um, we, I remember when we were kids just jumping dirt bikes, like I thought I was so cool getting like a foot off the ground. And then you're like, no, 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 check this out. And you freaking boom, like four or five feet up. And uh, I mean, life's kind of been like that ever since we were a kid is is, you know, all of these um, kind of triumphs, it's like, woo, and then here goes you. <laughs> and so to say the least, I think out of all friendships, man, you, you inspire me the most to be a better person uh, continually, so. Right on, right on. And, uh, you know, you give me someone to hang out with, so that's appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's so different because, like, you, you were a single kid, right? So, uh, you don't have like the brother thing. Like I have brothers and, you know, I mean, just like I think most families, we have times where we are very much getting along and other times where we are very different. Uh, and it just depends where we are in, in life, but that's never really happened with us. Um, but at the same time too, like, because you didn't have any friends or brothers, you had all friends all the time over, right? Like in your house always was our central point that we'd come to. Um, then your mom also was like the dead mother too. Yeah. And so that, that, that helped a lot. Like, I mean, if, if I were going to get arrested, uh, I, I would definitely call, like if, if I'm sitting on a curve, it's high school, I'm in trouble for something. I would definitely call your mom before I would call mine. Right. <laughs> and you'd be like, you're like, Hey mom. And she would be like, Oh, I know what's up. <laughs> hi son. You know, hi Aaron. What'd you do? <laughs> it's so funny too how, how quickly she would keen into those moments you know like <laughs> I'll never forget you coming over one day and you're like oh yeah did your mom let you know that uh I had to go pick her up from the bar the other day <laughs> <laughs> that was payback though yeah she called like yeah hey there's uh there's no cab set up that was before uber though it's funny too because like all the conveniences we have now we didn't have back then. It's certainly not in Parker, right? Well, even even like up until I actually I was eighteen, I didn't have a cell phone, so it was always like I get pages from people. Like, well, that's cool. What the fuck do I do with a page? I have no phone. <laughs> so like, you're driving. I'm like, great, I got a page. Like, cool. I don't even know what to do. Right. No, that's funny. Well, and you know, even with that, like sentimentally, I, I know when my mom did pass away, you know, you were kind enough to, to even fly me out around, you know, her, her anniversary of her death and, you know, spend time with me and, and help me really through all that. So, you know, that's a huge part of friendship, man. You've always, always been there to support me with that. I so appreciate that, man. Yeah, that was a hard, that was a hard one, I think, for all of us there. Too. But it was also like, 
it, I don't know. It, it's hard with your mom though, because she loved everyone way more than she loved herself. Right. Like she, she always would take care of everyone. And then that was kind of like the thing she didn't take care of herself so much. And right. uh, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it is kind of interesting. It's, it's an interesting perspective like that. So yeah. Yeah. But anyway. so, uh, yeah. So on, on the, the talk of friendship, then I will, uh, I'll ask you, uh, what is your, <laughs> what's your funniest moment? <laughs> My funniest moment? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's gotta be a classic story when, uh, we had all been drinking and it was a meteor shower that evening and uh we had <laughs> i punched a dwarf i already know where this is going <laughs> so we had a little little friend in the neighborhood who was like what four or five years older than us at, and so you know he thought because he was older he could easily convince you to give him your keys and so he woke you up out of this uh drunken stupor and was like hey can i get your keys to your grandma key and like without even hesitating you just Stopped him. <laughs> so, but you know, it's funny that you asked me what's the funniest moment because it's, dude. Every time I, I can literally call you for a five minute conversation and I'm gonna belly roll, laugh, and feel better. Yeah, I mean, and uh, the the pure courage that you have to say whatever it is on your mind. So that when I've been at four with my. Yeah. I love it. No, and I, I, I love the fact, uh, you know, that, dude, no matter how uh, ridiculous of a human being I am, you always accept me for who I am, too, you know, like. Oh, we're all just, I mean, well, the, so that's the whole thing, though, is like, if you can't be who you are with your friends, then they're not friends. Like, you think about, like, some of those times where maybe – why so like adults are worse at it right so like you go to an adult party and it all becomes just this like mirroring like you're just trying to find someone that you could talk to because normally you walk in and you're like hey, everyone's just a bag of dicks right <laughs> and so you walk in and you're like i and people and like you're just like everyone just starts dressing down like you start looking at baseball caps like maybe there's a team i like maybe there's a shirt like patagonia oh, you know, <laughs> Like start zeroing it down everyone. But then there's those moments you walk in and everyone's like got a shawl on or a turtleneck and you're like, fuck, there ain't a single human here I can talk to. But my kids are gonna have fun. I gotta talk to someone. So you start going around and now you're just trying to find the smallest ounce that you can get along with someone on. Right. Uh, don't you hate when you when, when when the court is being redone at the tennis club? Like, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't give a shit. Wait, you like beer? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. And I'm getting you hammered drunk. Yeah, and obviously, like, the drunker you get, you're going to find something in common with people. Probably women. Um, but, so anyway, so, like, you just find those. And occasionally, you get surprised, and you do meet someone randomly that you really have that with. But, like, the friendships from when you're young, those are all the people that, you know, it's different because you no longer need that commonality, like, I love fly fishing. I love fly fishing. A lot of my friends fly fish. You don't know how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> I love mountain biking. All my friends mountain bike. You probably, I assume you pedal around the neighborhood with your kids. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Go all on. right. Yeah, so, uh -huh, so, yeah. so there's something that kind of like happens when you transcend the commonalities where it's just so many stories together that have happened over such a long time that the things that you find most relatable don't matter anymore. And if you can't replicate that again, you can't, you can't find that person where those commonalities are why you would want to hang out with them. Whereas now that's not even necessary. It doesn't even matter anymore. Man, that's really interesting that you say that. I've never thought about that before. Cause you're right. Like uh, there's, there's a deeper connection to where you, you don't even need anything to talk about. Like it's literally just whatever's on your mind and there's no, there's no forced connection. There's no um, awkwardness. There's no necessity to force anything within the, the relationship. That's really interesting, you know? And well, think about, think about like um, during the pandemic, just like anywhere we do our zoom calls. Right. And so you've got 
Gardner, you've got Gil, you've got Jake, the Schroeder brothers alone. <laughs> uh, I can't think of like a more diverse, like completely <laughs> different group of people that, I mean, on everything we do for a living, where we live, what we like to spend our time on, everything. And yet we all get together and everyone instantly can just jump into a conversation and having fun and doing stuff like that. But if you put us into an event where we all had kids and our kids get together, I mean, it'd literally just be like the grab ass and be like, so Josh, how's work? <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about buying a Ford. You like, you like Ford? Just the professionalism. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like junk conversations because you don't even know how to begin. And it's, but those moments are built on some really crazy things, right? Like near death experiences. Right, right. Like, <laughs> Uh, remember, <laughs> remember, like l your birthday party, right? Oh, yeah. Your birthday party broken up by cops. They're arresting everyone. I'm the first to take a breathalyzer. I fail miserably. They say, "All right, drunkie, you know you're in the kitchen." Then the lieutenant walks in. Like five minutes later, is like, "All right, all the sober kids go in the kitchen." So now they're putting all the kids who pass with me. <laughs> Gardner's shimming down from like the balcony and crawls. If you remember, he, he had climbed over the kitchen and like hung down and fell into the thing. No one noticed. <laughs> you, you're in there. You're in there with uh, with us. They didn't even ask what your name was. And then it's like, it's almost midnight and the lieutenant walks back in and is like, all right, uh, you guys got to get home by a curfew. You all can leave. We're walking down the stairs. Gardner's hammered. He falls down the stairs. <laughs> Clearly he's not, he is not sober. You know, they're shining lights on us. Like, hey, you kids come back here. We hop in the car and drive away. And the whole time they're interviewing kids, they're going, so whose party is this? And they're like, it's Josh Allen's. It's Josh Allen's. There's two parents who get arrested. One of them, Josh Allen's mom. Who isn't there? There is no Josh Allen. <laughs> there is no record of a Josh Allen. We go, we go to your house. Of course, you know, the cops. You, I can't even remember if they showed up or not. No. They never did. I remember. Because I thought the plan was like to like rub our eyes and be like, oh, we just woke up. Oh, my mom. Yeah, we're cleaning up all the birthday <laughs> shit all around the house. Yeah, yeah. It was like a crazy thing. <laughs> That's right. Birthday <laughs> decorations everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, moments like that, right? That's how friendships are built. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, man. Well, it's it's just, it's funny to me because, so it, it's it's hilarious you mention all those names because, of course, every single one of those people are, are going to be, like, having a conversation like that as well with this. And, uh, you know, but... I don't think I've ever embarrassed myself quite as much with anybody else as I have with you. You know, like I showed up, I think Thanksgiving night at your house, like totally wrecked and like hiding behind your couch, trying to have a conversation with you uh, without your parents hearing, which are literally sitting at the table, like 10 feet away. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember my dad being like, Josh, you need a ride? No, I'm good. I'm good. It's okay, bud. You want a ride? <laughs> <laughs> like, get out. <laughs> I'd like to, yeah. No, there's, uh, they're very, yeah, probably. I probably had some good ones. I mean, well, no, and I'm just, you know, like, take your wedding, for example. Like, I'm like, oh, dude, I do public speaking all the time. Like, I'm not even going to write anything down. And then I get up and I realize, like, I have more respect for the people in the room and for you than I've ever had, like, in any speech ever. And I just totally get tongue-tied and twisted. And I, I don't even, like, I give, like, the worst freaking speech ever you could imagine. Thank God my brother followed you, though, because, like, oh. that was, like, so like you bombed and then my brother who is like manly man you know like and he's so sure-footed and he's just like uh, i love my brother like whoa whoa 
pull the tampon out, buddy. Like he was just full on blubbering. And then Ryan killed it, right? Of course, like perfectly planned and Malcolm oh, did the Malcolm. same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have all those. Uh I I did someone record my toast to you? Uh I I think so. I think so. Cause yeah, it was awesome. You know, like you did a fantastic one at my wedding, you know, it was a full, I I remember it was good enough that Brandon Gill was like, fuck bud. (laughs) (laughs) Like follow that shit. (laughs) Right. Like why didn't he go last? Come on guys. (laughs) (laughs) Did I go first too? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You were like the first to hop up. Like, yep. That's the, let's go. Oh, I had, yeah, I had, I had, I had planned it for like, like a couple weeks and like had it memorized and whatever and had it down yeah good jokes and everything in there i wish at some point you should ask too and see if someone has it because i'd love to watch it again yeah i really hope somebody did i you know like we partied for a week for my wedding i i don't remember a lot of it i just i like i was so wrecked even going on my honeymoon it took me like two days into the honeymoon to even like recover and, and be somewhat of a human being again so so my, my honeymoon, we're in Hawaii mm-hmm. and we, we go out on this boat to go deep sea fishing, had a great time. And, and not the captain, his like the skipper, I don't know, maybe it's, it's, the skipper is the captain, right? Yeah. So right. whoever fucking Gilligan was, to skip it, <laughs> right. that guy, yeah. that guy was from Evergreen, Colorado. And he, it was right when we got legalized, he's like, you guys uh, into that we were like, well, as a matter of fact, we are good, sir. Uh, do you know where to get to any of the dankity dank here on the island? It's like, yeah, as soon as we get back, man, like give me a call an hour later and I'll bring by an aider. So he brings it by and and we're at like the Weston, fancy ass Weston. And I'm like, I don't have a pipe, man. Do you got any papers or anything? He's like, no, you don't need them on the island. Like we have green tree, uh, green tea plants everywhere. And you just pull off the two leaves. They slide. They're like, they're like little funnels and they slide into each other and it makes a perfect little chillum. Right. And so all I remember is like, at some point we met some other couples and we parted too hard and I'm in like, it was one of those open air entryways for the check-in Mm-hmm. And people are like checking in. I'm just like this guy ripping up plants, like looking at them, <laughs> throwing up, trying to find two things fit together. You know, the manager's coming over, like, you know, sir, can I help you? Like, no, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> just tearing up, like trying to fit two pieces together. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. No, no. no. I know what I'm doing. I'm going to go watch some seed turtles. And Dee's like, uh, I don't know him. Like, not at yeah, all. Oh, oh, for sure. You're like, would you embarrass me? Would you get upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I don't care. Yeah. It's so funny. So funny, man. But you know, uh, it, what else is kind of cool is you're not only friends with myself, my mom, but you're also friends with my dad, you know, like my entire family knows you at this point in time, you know, and, and like you were saying, we have so much history together that the moment we're in the same room, it's almost like just being on the call with all the brothers and friends, it just lights up just like that, you know? Yeah. So I think also though, what, what is really different about yours and I's relationship is that, you know, there's, there's, there's people, you see it all the time on like the Hollywood ET bullshit where people are like, oh, you know, pop singer and pop singer are friends, you know, and oh, they're, they're lovey. And then, oh, break up in friend land. Well, that's because all their stories are like, you know, everything is hunky dory, but for as many good stories as we have, we also have some serious shit that has happened that are not pleasant moments, not stuff that either of us look back on and say that we are probably either proud of that moment, um, happy with the decisions that were made. I mean, a lot of them we got just full on lucky on, but I mean, that's, that's a thing. So, so our friendship isn't just like it's sunshine and lollipops. We have plenty of moments there of, 
you know, I mean, like, uh, uh, you know, we go all the way back to like the hot tub incident and stuff like that. That's one whole, I mean, I could just say that and you know where it is. And then you have other things too, like Mike Hearn, when, you know, he, he fell off the balcony and, you know, hit his head and, you know, went and saw him with basically, you know, his brain hanging out, you know, stuff like that. Uh, fights, just defending each other and stuff like that, where let's be honest, we didn't always win. Right. Um, you know, just, just things like that, that have happened over time. Um, but yeah, so we, I mean, but that's important on this is to have some, some bad moments as well. Yeah. To be real about it. I mean, and not only that, the amount of times that you forgave me for being a jackass, like uh, pretty sure my mom sold the house with the blood stain in the basement from when we wrestled. And... That was, I mean, yeah, that was a pure accident though. You tied me up so good. And there was just <laughs> nothing I could do. Well, and I mean, just stupid stuff of being kids, like insulting your religion at the time and just, you know, just stupid stuff. Yeah, but then, but, but then you grow up and you realize, like, that was all bullshit anyways. Like, I'm, I'm the worst at it now. I make family guy look friendly about me, you know? I mean, <laughs> there's, just, there's just, like, facts about that that happen. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, even till recently with you and your wife carrying me out of freaking Mile High Stadium because I drank too many downhill racers before the game. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> that was, that was a... <laughs> no, what yeah, I love... you fell asleep in the car and woke up the next morning. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that. I still, to this day, like, I woke up and I had no idea how, like, I just remember being on the balcony at Mile High Stadium, like, screaming for the Broncos and wake up in your house and, like, being like, oh, man, how, how like, who do I owe an apology to? Like, what do I do? And you're like, no, dude, you're cool. You're cool. And Brandon's like, no, you weren't, you jackass. Like, Wombon and D had to carry you out of the stadium. <laughs> But like you would totally would have just played it off. I would have no idea, you know. I mean, your sauce or whatever. Well, here's here's what I say is like if you were that bad, we passed a at least a dozen police officers on the walk back to the car without a single one being like, oh, you gentlemen, step over here. So obviously, you know. I suppose there's there's some truth to that, but it's just really funny to me, you know, that uh that there's that level of forgiveness, that level of, uh, you know, acceptance probably. And maybe that's the biggest thing too, is for what's going on in the world right now is for people just to accept e each other for who they are and what it is, you know? But that's because they have no basis on why they should accept someone, right? Like, first of all, you, you, you know, in order to accept someone, you have to have a, a, some type of respect for someone. Uh -huh. In too many of these instances, you know, for me, I, 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 I am a large supporter of police. I, I work a lot with them in my world. I think most of them are wonderful people. There are absolute POSs out there, no doubt about it. And the difference I think between those guys is there are a lot of cops who have true respect for everyone and they want to hear out your side of the story and that's kind of how they do it. And then some who just, they don't care. They have an ax to grind and they're going to do it. And that, that already is going to set you off. But that's also no different than the protests of people who are out there who are respecting, like we are fighting for this and then looters who again have no, it's just, it's just a fact of like, are you willing to accept someone, respect them? And I mean, I don't know. Again, you'd have to just look at how many events we've done and, and stuff like that. And there's so many that would outweigh just like a couple mistakes here and there that people make, you know? Yeah. So. It's always the 80-20 rule, right? Like 80% of the entire world are great human beings. It's the 20% that are complete jack arses. And for some odd reason, our media loves to promote like everybody's. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's the person we're going to. But <clears throat> we as humans love that, right? So I'll give you an example. Everyone's like, everyone's like, you know, oh, the media glorifies it. The media glorifies it. Well, let me tell you, if you walked into a Walmart right now, and you saw a man with a mullet and a tube top driving a rascal down the candle aisle. You're going to stop and poke a joke. That's the 20%. There's plenty of people around. You'd be like, you know, for the most part, Walmart actually is upstanding people. Nope. We say that guy exemplifies Walmart. 
<laughs> I don't know why you had to take the Walmart because every time I go to Walmart, there's a fight in the parking lot. Like there's a, oh no, you didn't. And there's all sorts of stuff. Well, that, that sounds very Houston. Uh, <laughs> That's now, and now out here, you know, what's funny about that though, is I've seen two fights. The last two times I've been to Walmart, there's been a fight over mass. And I just find it so funny of just like, you could just feel that boiling point going. And I know it's not going to go bad enough that I need to like really get out of the way. So it's more just like you kind of step back, you know, and just watch, right? Because you, you, can, you can see it coming like, you should put on your goddamn mask. I've got a condition, being stupid. Uh, no, just, but that takes it full circle to how you started this whole thing, you know, it's like, we love it. Like, you're not going to keep walking like, oh, I really need to go get bananas and get home. No, I'm going to watch these two fight over a mask. Oh, for sure. Anything. If I'm going anywhere at that moment, it's because there's a popcorn vendor around. <laughs> I'm getting a snack. I'm staying a while. I want to see how this one, <laughs> I want to see how this one goes, you know? Get your and coolers. Then if, what's that? Get your coolers. <laughs> get your coolers. And if anything, um, you know, too, it's 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 a good deal because someone's probably you know going to throw a bag of canned goods. It's going to dent. Then they have to discount them. So you can actually get good deals if you stick around long enough. I could I could see that. I could see that. You know, that's funny because uh, didn't like your brother when he went through Ponderosa, the um, the lockers weren't um, like bolted down so didn't they like tip over because as you they said, did I they saw, hurt god they hurt someone real bad yeah i think it I took remember. somebody's arm off i don't know why i was just thinking people fighting knocking over a, an aisle and somehow that came back no that was like a prank i don't think it was fighting i think it was a prank where someone tipped them and then they just went did, 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 and totally did smash someone and that's pretty um, crazy you know it's interesting now there's you know, everybody's so sensitive that uh, something like that would, would probably make the news. <laughs> it's just crazy. Get a little backbone, I guess, at this point, right? And I mean, it's, 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 it's a fine line. You know, I have a daughter, you have a daughter, and we both have sons. My son's younger than my daughter, yours older. Like Nicholas, you can totally beat on. You can probably beat on Jay pretty good too at this point, you know, yeah. wrestle hard. Cameron loves it. He's too, but he just loves to rough house, just okay. roll around, you know. And he's he's caught me with a right hand a couple times that I was like, <laughs> I gotta got start watching now. Like he, he'll, he'll, he'll loosen the tooth if you're not careful. There's like a sweetness to, of girls though, but you also want to have, let them have a backbone. So it's like walking that fine line where you have to, you have to, have to you know, make sure that they're tough, but you, you can't be so tough on them, you know? At the same time, you know, you go to the park and then there's just like these people that annoy us so bad, you know, just like their kids acting like a complete douche. And they're just like, Colton, stop it. Colton, God, stop, please. please. <laughs> Ah, Colton. Colton. <laughs> what is wrong? Your kid is never going to respect you. <laughs> so I got a quick funny story for you. We're moving from Colorado to Texas, right? And we're, I think, in Amarillo or, or somewhere right, right into Texas. And we stopped to have some dinner. And the table next to us, the mom hauls off and just starts thumping this kid right and you know in in Colorado if that were to happen you wouldn't walk out of the restaurant without CPS meeting you at the door right and so like our kids that's old Parker old Parker you could definitely do it <laughs> old Parker you could full on take off your hat unapologetically beat your child sit back down put your hat on <laughs> perfectly fine Parker now I mean now no but I see what you're saying but in Texas that's got to be like I, I, and we just looked at the kids and we're like, you're in Texas now. And it was like two weeks before it was <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Like it was, it was funny. And it's, it's kind of ironic that you say that, you know? And uh, so, but anyways, I want to be very respectful of your time. Uh, nobody knows this, but we had planned this earlier and I screwed up and uh, you were nice enough to jump back on. And I know you got a lot of stuff going on. It's Friday. No, it was, it was fun listening to, to, to you slurp on pho for 15 minutes while I walked around my house. And Josh was like, oh, that's cool. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. Which, by the way, amazingly beautiful house, man. You, you deserve everything you got, though. You're also one of the hardest working people I know. And uh, not only hardest working, but somebody who will sacrifice whatever's needed to get to where you want to be. And, uh, you know, I, I really admire that. I, I don't know anybody else that does that. And I certainly ha- do not have that trait. So that's amazing, man. I tip my hat. All right. So, so last question for you, then. Uh, if, we're, if we're on parting ways. Okay. Where, where does Josh see himself? And I know because I know how our conversation started before you hit record. So this is going to be such a shitty thing for me to ask. <laughs> but <laughs> where does Josh see himself in 10 years? When I, when I talk to Josh Allen, my friend, and we're doing our normal chatter about the wives, the kids. I mean, by then, 10 years, mm-hmm. you have two kids in college, Great. one about to graduate. You, is Jay eight now? Yep. No, he's yeah, not. So you, he's not. All right. So yeah, you're an empty nester. Yeah. Now for me, I've got kids who are just like Sedona's just about to be a teenager, right? Or is a teenager dating yeah. boys, probably stuff like that. So we're completely different worlds. 10 years from now, where's Josh? Man, this is what I would love to see happen, right? Now, everybody tells me that I am just completely uh, Disneyland. I might as well ride a car. You've always been Disneyland. That has been the best part about you is you are the (laughs) ultimate dreamer. Right. I wish I had a notebook of all the businesses Josh Allen was going to own and run. I mean, I just, (laughs) let me, hold on here. (laughs) right we could publish Go. It. it's like what to not do ever you know and it would be perfect uh, like uh, uh, a smoke shop specializing in artisan cheeses yeah um i see <laughs> chili dogs uh, so you know honestly in 10 years, uh, if everything works out right, you know, then uh, Nicholas will be done with college, self-sufficient. That, that puts him at 25. That puts Elizabeth at 22. So she's like probably graduating, if not. And how old were you with your first kid? Think about that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I was 19 with our first kid, you know. So, uh, so I mean, any chance that, dude, you might be a grandpa. Well, let's not. Let's not. Let's uh, you're not. right. You're right. I'm ruining the moment. I'm asking what you think you'll be at, not reality. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, let's hope that history does not repeat itself. Uh, you know, it's funny that you say that because the the world of difference between how I raised my kids and how I was raised and how my parents were raised. And, you know, we're not just talking uh, simplistic as far as uh, money and, and opportunity. I mean, literally just the, the fact. You guys are there so much more though. Exactly. I mean, after your parents got divorced though, right? I mean, like it yeah. was just, it was just, there was, there wasn't enough time to take care of us. And, and especially talk about talk, talk about a full-time job was, was your mom trying to deal with us. Right, right. It wasn't just you. She had a bunch of boys to take care of. Well, and like you said, before before they got a divorce, I mean, they, they loved the bar, man. And, you know, I could time it. I knew my parents were going to leave the bar at 1140 to make it home before midnight so they didn't catch any cops' attention. And so we would be downstairs partying, going crazy. And then I'd be like, everybody out, everybody out. Come on, my parents are going to be home. I got all the windows open. It's freaking January in Colorado. And I'm like sitting there. You know, like the house reeks and uh, I'm, I'm definitely intoxicated. And they're, hey, buddy, how was your night? It's kind of Want to play some pool? <laughs> yeah, I was allowed over though, remember? Like, I, it was okay for me to be there. So, right. it was like, me and Gardner had a permanent pass where, like, we could just, oh. we could just hang out there and, and knock it off, you know? No, it's absolutely true. So, you know, so... I don't know, man. I, I really hope to goodness uh, that my my kids are, are smarter and a little bit better off than, than what I was doing. So if, if everything works out right, 10 years, man, we're selling literally everything. We're getting a tiny home. 
I'm switching to an online permanent job, which COVID is definitely helping me to, to get that way anyways. And, uh, you know, we're, we're traveling around. We're, we're finding where I want to build my self-sustaining home, my, my Earthship. Your Earthship. Yeah, you've always wanted an Earthship. And then, you know, when my kids do start having children or do start having their own life, I have my own permanent Earthship. I have my tiny home. And I can then travel to their house without invading their space because, come on, let's let's face it, no uh, no girl that Nicholas marries is going to want me around, uh, and no guy that Elizabeth marries is going to really want to hang out with me too often. So um, I'm going to have my own space. We can go visit other people while we're visiting them, and then always have our self-sustaining home to go retreat to. And to me, that's a little slice of uh, retirement in a way. Even even if I have to work and do all of that, you know, having my own place and having my own paradise is, is really my slice of retirement. The, the lines the lines are permanently erased going forward on what it means to work in a permanent job. You know. I mean, even for me, like, just, you know, I actually went to the office a couple of days this week and it was nice, but it was just more about friendship with the, with my direct assistants who, you know, we haven't seen each other a lot and, but there's, there's no, uh, no one else there. And I think that's honestly how it's going to be uh, moving forward. And it could even be to a point here where we stopped going to the office and I just say, Hey guys, come up to my house. Like, Let's work for a while. I'll throw some steaks on the grill because all of us can sit here and work on internet. It's just that's that's going to change. But how um, cool would that be, man? That would be an awesome day. Like, no, no, I got to go work. No, honey, no, I am going to work. Um, does that mean you're going to be at Walmart's until midnight again? Yes, yes, that is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Before I forget, then and and uh, just look this up. Uh, a property crossed my uh, plate in, in Guthrie. Colorado and it's an earthship. It was like 400 and something. Okay. Fully self-sustained home. Check it out, dude. It's absolutely insane. Um, All right. Yeah. I'll check it out. Gun three. It's, okay. it's, it's super bomb. Yeah. Um, it's got, it's got propane and stuff. So it has some extra okay. features, you know, that you, just has backup, but otherwise full solar, solar uh, water pumps, um, you know, greenhouses, the whole nine yards. It's, it's rad. Dude, that's super awesome. Yeah, and if you think that I can have anything minus luxury and my wife be okay with it, like, yeah, no, I'm gonna have- Well, that's why you should look at this. This is like 100%, just everything's hand hewn wood. Ah, dude, it's a gorgeous home. It's it's like a model home. That's a nurse ship. Check it out. Gotcha. All right, man, well, you know, closing thought for you too is uh, what's, you you've always had a goal of retiring when you're 40. Are you still on on track for that? Does that mean that uh, as your kids get older, you are also going to be able to transition into being there all the time for them too? Uh, so for so I guess I guess my thought of retirement is definitely way different now. Um, I guess you know for me, I I don't think I want my children to see dad not really doing anything. Hmm, gotcha. Not that I wouldn't be doing anything. Like I'm not that person. I'm a busybody, so I love doing stuff around the house. I love certainly fly fishing and biking, but I do think that they need to see me have a purpose, right? So my understanding of what not retirement, more focused on my purpose. Uh, my purpose is is going to develop over time. I, I know for a fact at really making sure I'm there for them um, on a level that perhaps I don't feel like I had when I was being raised. Right. Um, but also. Um, I am very blessed on what I've been given um, and, and what I've been able to earn. And so I think, I think there's going to come a time somewhere around that 40 or shortly after 40, where a lot, a lot of my focus is going to be making a difference in friends, family, coworkers, focus on everyone else around me and kind of uh, finding the joy it is in blessing other people. Gotcha. And, uh, I, I, I totally think that's where it's going to go. Um, I do think that the, the job, j just my industry, the mortgage industry is going to change over the next four or five years anyways, to where I'm going to have to reinvent a career anyways. Um, so it'll be a fun thing to, to figure out. Maybe I can officially start a real nonprofit that not only does give me income through the nonprofit, but I can make a big difference in other people's lives. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but I guess it's probably going to be some type of outreach 
who are using fishing and things like that for inner city kids uh, or, or uh, disabled veterans, uh, kind of helping them. So something I love to do, I would feel like I was retired every single day, uh, but I could also make a big difference in people's lives. So. No, that's awesome, man. Oh, here, I'm sorry. One last thing. So I always kind of throw what I think people are experts at and then ask, you know, to share a little bit of, of how they've gotten to that point. And you, you have this expertise of being clear, like absolutely clear, no matter what you're doing, you are clear. Can you just shed some advice, some light on how you maintain such clarity through everything you do. I mean, I see you get pissed off here and there, but you're still clear about why you're pissed off. I mean, it's, it's amazing the clarity that you are able to maintain. Yeah. So, I mean, um, so I've, I've got a, I've got a vision of, of who I am. So it's not, it's not, it's not like I want to be a millionaire. It's not that it's, I am a loving father. Now, whether or not there's days I am not a loving father, I am not the best dad out there, right? That everyone struggles with that. There's days that I am not a blessing to my coworkers or to my friends. But by every day me starting off and it pops up on my phone, a written statement that I read to myself, and you can call them affirmations, you can call them what they are, but they are truly who I, I know I am, mm. even though I may not be that person all the time. So I start off every day with that. Whether I feel good, whether I don't, I, I take time to reflect on who I am. And um, sometimes that helps me find my center line. Sometimes um, I can pop that open and be like, all right, I should have handled that differently. I know I didn't live up to my vision. But that's where a lot of that clarity comes from. And it's a crazy skill that you can never be perfect at. Right. You can never learn how to do that perfectly all the time. But you can really do it. And, 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 and there's like different forms of clarity. Mine's a realistic clarity. Mm, gotcha. And I say that because there's like Brandon Gill is a super positive clarity. Hmm. There's sometimes in life I'm like, dude, I, I get you're being clear, but you are so optimistic about the clarity <laughs> of this, right? Uh, like versus the glass is half empty. But that's his, that is like his superpower. And you know what I'm talking about, I right? Do. Like that is his superpower yeah. is he, he can will himself through anything. Uh, mine is a very realistic one too. And so, like you said, when I'm pissed, I, I, I can allow myself to be angry and be very clear as to why I am. Uh, but that's, that's just a skill I've worked at very hard. Um, and, and a lot of that's just, just something I was born with, raised with, whatever the case is. Uh, but it's a very analytical way of looking at life, chopping it up. And, and it's the same thing you can apply to finances or whatever. It's just, you know, let's use common sense. Let's, let's look at this. And then what are our goals and achievement points and breaking up into pieces? And I don't know, I guess that's it. And fortunately it's worked for me like 95% of the time. So <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's cool. All right, brother. Well, thank you so much for your time. Love this. Uh, I'm going to have to snag you for some other uh, focused intention topics here in the future, but uh, thank you so much, man. I love you. I love your family and uh, many, many, thank you, brother. Uh, See you, man. Have a great weekend. You too.